Today we want to talk about utilizing wheat dry distillers grains in a low quality extensive field grazing system. Some of the advantages of using these co-products of the ethanol industry include their use as an energy and protein supplement in a crop residue or a low quality grazing system with beef cattle. Some of the advantages of using wheat dry distillers grains is its concentration of nutrients. In fact, you can look at the commodity, whether it's wheat or corn, and the value of that commodity is the level of the nutrients in the, in the actual crop itself. The cereal crop, for example, wheat, say would be 12% protein. Well, that is increased threefold coming out the back in that co-product or that dry distillers grains. For example, the crude protein level of wheat DDGS is around 38 to 39 percent crude protein, so a really op a real good opportunity here for, for protein supplementation. The other benefit, as I mentioned earlier, was it use as an energy supplement. Uh, why? Because the energy is coming from two sources. First, the digestible fiber, and secondly, the fat in that wheat DDGS, which is different than for example, the energy would be coming from barley grain, from the starch in the grain, and that starch would have a negative associative effect on fiber digestion. We don't see that when we supplement beef cows with wheat DDGS. We see a, actually a benefit to that energy in there and a benefit on their forage intake. Some of the disadvantages with feeding this, this supplement, of course, are its high level of other constituents. For example, phosphorus. Phosphorus is elevated threefold. Uh, in the barley cereal itself, it's around 0.3%, and that is increased to 1%. So that, is, of course, can be an issue in terms of our calcium phosphorus ratio in the diet of the beef cow. So we have to pay special attention to keep that cal phosphorus ratio at a 2 to 1, somewhere in that range. And so if you're going to feed high levels of wheat DDGS, you need to certainly bring in a calcium source like limestone to, to make that ratio work for you. The other issue, of course, is high sulfur content in wheat DDGS. Uh, high sulfur, when it gets over 0.4% of the diet, will have an issue in terms of uh, tying up thiamine absorption. And we do see what we call uh, polio or, or brainer cattle with that high sulfate in that, in, that, in that ration. Of course, high levels of phosphorus and sulfur are coming out or being excreted. Uh, wherever these cattle are being supplemented. And so there can be this potential impact on the environment with high phosphorus levels. Using wheat DDGS as an energy protein supplement, it's going to work fantastic in terms of supplementing low quality diets, say high roughage diets with beef cows, high forage diets. And of course we know there that the digestibility of those high, for, those high roughage diets is the high level of fiber or lignin content. And the low crude protein level, say 6-7% crude protein, and certainly will need to come in with some type of energy or protein supplement and we feel that wheat DDGS can, can fit that pattern. So our, our approach here was to look at different supplementation strategies supplementing beef cows consuming crop residue or barley straw chaff piles in a winter grazing program. So really we want to look at the effect of three supplement strategies on the impact of cow performance or body weight change, body condition, as well as level of straw chaff intake. As I mentioned, we're, we're looking at the impact of, of these supplement strategies on cows utilizing low quality crop residue. We feel there's a great value to utilizing crop residue. Uh, it's, it's certainly uh, low quality, but a good starting point, a good base ration for, for a beef cow during that first or second trimester of pregnancy. And there are thousands of acres of barley and wheat and oat crop residue out there that can be utilized for, for beef cows for wintering programs. In order to do this particular study, we chose to use Ranger barley. Ranger is a smooth-on barley we felt was going to be good in a beef cattle wintering program. So a field, 60-acre field of Ranger barley was seeded. That crop then grew to maturity. It was combined. The crop residue or the straw and chaff was collected using a hole buncher, which is an attachment on the back of a combine that collects our straw chaff and deposits them in piles in a windrow, approximately 40-50 pounds each of these piles. Then we set out with three supplementation strategies. We chose to formulate our control ration using straight rolled barley. We 
would meet those requirement needs for those beef cows in early, late first trimester or second trimester of pregnancy. And then we just displaced that barley one for one with wheat DDGS. And the third supplementation strategy was a blend or a 50-50 blend of barley and wheat DDG. 48 cows were assigned to this particular project in a replicated study and supplements were fed daily to avoid digestive upsets. As well, we top dressed all of our supplements with that additional calphos and additional limestone to get that ratio of 2 to 1 calcium phosphorus. Some of the measures that we did out there on this particular study was we were really interested in what's the difference or the body weight change of these cows while they're out there grazing crop residue and being supplemented with either barley or wheat DDGS or a 50-50 blend of the two. So our cows were measured at the beginning of the trial in terms of body weights were taken and then body weights were taken at the end of test. We also monitored body condition looking for any change in body condition score because we know condition or body condition is a good measure of fat reserves of these cows in a wintering program. It was also quite useful to try and estimate actual intake of the straw chaff. How much of this low quality crop residue were these animals consuming and was there an impact or an effect of the supplement that they were being fed on their amount of straw chaff or crop residue intake. Because we were asking these cows to go out there and graze crop residue and in extreme winter conditions there was the need to come in with a hay supplementation as well. Because we were monitoring intake of the straw chaff crop residue some days in extreme cold weather when it got minus 25 celsius we were supplementing minimally with the hay just to increase that forage content. Of course we were looking at a low quality diet with these beef cows and just some of the quality on this crop residue is sitting about 7% crude protein on that straw chaff barley crop residue pile is about 7% crude protein and roughly 58% in vitro dry matter digestibility. So a low quality feed especially in those cold months of December and January for beef cows. The quality of our, of our supplements included our barley was sitting about 13% crude protein, our DDGS was roughly around 38% crude protein, and the IVDMD or the in vitro dry matter digestibility of the barley was 89% and the in vitro dry matter digestibility was 88% for the wheat DDGS. So as I mentioned we are really interested to see the impact of the effect of supplementation strategy on body weight change of these beef cows out there grazing crop residue during the months of November, December, January. Looking at the change, as I mentioned, we, me we measured body weight at the beginning of the test and at the end of the test. The cows that were being supplemented with barley and grazing crop residue piles either maintained the body weight or lost minimal amount of body weight. Looking at the cows that were fed the wheat DDGS, we see that there was a positive body weight gain in fact, one and a half times more body weight they gain compared to those cows that were fed barley as a supplement. The 50-50 blend cows also, they gained uh, roughly 66% more body weight compared to those cows consuming barley. What does this mean? It means that we can measure the energy and protein content. More specifically, we can measure the energy content of wheat DDGS in the lab but really there's a lot more sources of energy from this particular supplement and the animals are telling us the true story and it's wonderful opportunity as a supplement in terms of providing energy and probably protein in a winter grazing strategy with cows consuming low quality forages. The other interesting aspect of this particular study is we were trying to estimate intake out there in terms of were these cows consuming more or less crop residue depending on whether they were supplemented with rolled barley wheat DDGS or a 50-50 blend of wheat DDGS and barley, we found there was no difference in fact of the amount of crop residue that these cows consumed and there was no difference between supplementation strategies. However, as I just mentioned, there was a greater body weight change for those cows supplemented with wheat DDGS compared to those supplemented with barley or the 50-50 blend. So just to pull out some summary from this particular study and some concluding remarks, we see that supplementation had no effect on forage intake or intake of that crop residue. Uh, body condition as well wasn't affected by supplementation strategy. However, cows that were supplemented with that straight wheat, 100% wheat DDGS or that blend of 50-50 had greater body weight change compared to those cows consuming uh, straight barley grain. 
which shows us that the cows in fact were benefiting from, from the greater energy value of the wheat DDGS than was predicted when we formulated the rations. To summarize, wheat DDGS uh, we believe is a wonderful supplement to either act as an energy or a protein supplement in low quality forage diets or winter grazing low quality forages. However, it all boils down to the price of the wheat DDGS compared to bringing barley in as an energy supplement to your farmer ranch.